Hello and welcome to step 7. This is the final video in this series to get you started with Kelxa. Now customising reports is a very broad topic and with many options and personal touches available. So in this video we're going to run through some of the popular changes that you might make using two tools, the report designer and account trees. The report designer allows you to edit the report template while account trees allows you to map your existing chart of accounts to a new arrangement. This video is designed to arm you with the basics and if you'd like further detailed support on either of these tools there's additional training videos and support notes available for both the report designer and account trees. So first using the report designer in this example we're going to customize the cost center budget summary template. We'll add a company logo to the header and a printed on date to the footer. Additionally, we'll be removing the year-to-date actual income and expense columns while adding the full year budget and unspent budget columns. The first step is to select the template we want to edit and create a copy of this template. Default templates cannot be edited, so a copy must be taken first. Once we have a copy, we can select it and expand the edit template section at the bottom and adjust the template name, report title and description as required. I'll skip over that for now and let's have a look at the operations available. The first option, Design Template Layout, opens the template in the Report Designer. The Open Template Layout allows you to open a saved template file, while the next option allows you to save your template to a template file, thus creating a portable template and a backup of your work. Lastly, you can delete the template. Let's open the designer. Now the first thing we're going to do is make some space for our company logo. Select the report header label control like this and then drag the right hand side in. Then we need to repeat this for the, the rest of the controls in the report header. Note the pink snap to guides when we have lined up correctly. Then we'll select the picture control from the toolbar on the left and select and drag where we want our logo to go. Use the picture control task menu to add your image. And in this case, I will also just need to set the sizing to stretch. This sets the image to fit to screen, however there are other sizing options available if you need them. Lastly, using the property grid, we'll remove the border from the picture control. That's it, the logo is now done. Now let's add the printed on date, and the first thing we need to do is add a label control. So select it from the toolbar and once again select and drag where you want it to go. Then using the task menu add the required text. Print it on will do for this and we can tidy up the formatting. Use the property grid to remove the border and we could also change the formatting such as font and size. However, I find the shortcuts in the top menu easier for this type of stuff. Lastly, resize the label and we'll move on to the data info. Select the page info control, then select and drag to the appropriate position. I'll just remove the border straight up this time. And then using the task menu, we choose what info to display. In this case, current date and time. And note that you can change the format using the format property, but I'm going to use the default. Okay, we now have our printed on date and logo inserted. So let's move on to the column changes. 
My personal preference when working with report columns is to create the headings first and then worry about the data that we need to attach to them after that. So in the page header band, we'll work on the column headings. Now because we are putting some full year data in here, I need to add an additional heading. To do that, insert a column and we can remove any of the cells we don't need. Now we want to line the year-to-date heading up with what will still be the year-to-date data. The same again with the actual heading. And now we can see we have two columns at the end for our new data, which, to remind you, will be a full year budget and an unspent budget. Now adjust the format properties in the property grid to match the other headings. We'll make the full year bold and then centre the heading. Now that we have the headings correct, we just need to bind the correct data to the detail band. Select the cell under full year budget. Now if we go to the fields list here on the right, you can see that it is currently bound to year to date actual expenses. If we scroll up and find annual budget net profit, the easiest option to change the binding is to select drag and drop to the appropriate cell. We repeat this for unspent budget. And there we go, we now have the correct data. However, that is not all we need to do. There are additional properties which, for example, format the number of decimal places and determine if negative numbers should be read. To access these options, you can use the cell tasks menu. Since the previous data in this cell was a number, the format string should be correct. This determines the number format, like decimal places and negative symbols. But we will need to make changes to the formatting rules. Click the three dots in the formatting rules field to open the rules editor. And in this screen, you can see all the rules we have created and the rules that are applied to this cell on the right. Now the rule we require does not exist, so we'll need to create it. Click Edit Rule Sheet, and then we click the plus symbol to create a new rule. We want to create a condition that is true when this value is negative to format the number with red text. So in the Condition Editor, browse to the Annual Budget Net Profit field, and double click to add it to the condition. Now all calcs and negative conditions are set as less than negative 0 0.5 since we only format to one decimal place and values greater than that are rounded up to zero. Now we will set the foreground colour to red and give our new rule a friendly name. Now we need to remove this rule and apply the new one we just created. And that's it for our full year budget column. Let's move on to the unspent budget. And I'll just quickly repeat the same steps. Cell tasks, formatting rules, edit rule sheet, and add a new rule. We edit the condition, only this time we need to use unspent budget net profit as the field. And once again, less than negative 0 0.5.
Then we set the foreground color to red and give it a friendly name. Now we need to remove this rule and apply the new one we just created. Okay, so we are done. Let's have a look at the finished result. Simply close the editor and run the report to view the finished product. You can see the company logo our changed columns and a printed on date. Now let's switch our attention to an alternate method for customizing reports, which allows you to rearrange your chart of accounts, which can be very handy for creating many types of summary reports with different header accounts. To do this, we need to create account trees. Once you have the account trees editor open, select the drop down on this icon to create a new tree. You have two options, fully allocated or fully unallocated. This is just a question of whether you would like to start with your existing account structure or start from scratch. In this example, we will use fully unallocated and call it board reporting. You can see that all of our accounts now are on the unallocated side. Our goal is to move all of these to the allocated side within each of the account types. Please note, you cannot move accounts between account types and you cannot hide data by leaving accounts unallocated. These accounts will be displayed in reports under a separate header called unallocated. So this plus symbol here allows you to create new header accounts. We give it a number and a name and I'll just point out that they do not have to be unique. Now by right clicking on our new header account, you see a number of options. In this example, I'm going to create another header under this one. Now if we repeat this process many times over, we can create a whole new structure of headers. And I'll skip the video forward and show you my end result. So here you see I've created a whole bunch of header accounts and I'm now going to go ahead and allocate my real accounts to these headers. There is a number of ways to do this. You can right click an account and select allocate to, then choose where you want it to go. And you can see we now have these accounts allocated. An alternate method is to simply drag and drop accounts into the header required. If we continue this process until we've finished allocating all our accounts and make sure to save your changes, then we can run a report with our new account tree to see the results. Okay, so here's some account trees I prepared earlier. I'd like to demonstrate the differences. If we run a report with the original account tree, You can see our account structure here with our standard chart of accounts. If we rerun this report using one of our new account trees, you can see we get some great summary reports. So as you can see, we now have the ability to report with our new account structure. Okay, so that is the end of step seven. As I said in the beginning of this video, there are many options for customizing reports. And this has by no means been a comprehensive look at these options. I do hope, however, that it has given you an idea of some of the things that can be achieved. And if you require further assistance with either the report designer or account trees, 
please refer to the additional support material available on these topics individually.